this notion of building more with less and trying to reduce the impact of our buildings whilst also improving the livability and the efficiency for all the residents. There's a language of dematerialisation, a stripping back of what is inessential to the core needs of the people that live here. It's about shelter, it's about comfort, it's about community. With the train station and shared path immediately to the west, a new public park two blocks south and the Sydney Road retail shopping to the east. This apartment's ideally located to support and to connect residents within a broader community. This is one in a string of community and housing projects by Breathe and others that have built up a low carbon, high quality residential precinct that hugs the rail corridor. Nightingale Housing are a not-for-profit developer focused on delivering low-carbon and community-centred housing at cost. The project aspirations are a really fine balance between sustainable social, environmental and financial objectives. Importantly, it was to be fossil fuel free and imagined with the intent to build more with less, reducing cost and carbon while questioning inessential. Applied finishes and things like chrome on brass tapware or building elements like ceilings and even uses like car parking or individual laundries all give way to a more imperfect, robust and livable space. Perhaps lastly, the intent was to do all of this in a way that supports a thriving community and at a scale that works. Nanagawa Anstey is a seven and eight storey set of adjoining apartment buildings, which comprise two communities, 54 apartments in total, from three bedrooms to tile house apartments. On ground, there are six commercial tenancies, a shared guest house, communal recycling room, and space for almost 150 bikes. Each community has rooftop terraces with dining, recreation, and productive landscapes, communal laundries, clotheslines, and a bathhouse. With a very busy street to the north and a fast-paced, very narrow commuter bike path to the west, we wanted to create a covered public colonnade to offer pedestrians reprieve and to establish an entrance for each of the tenancies. Having entered by either the colonnade or directly from the bicycle garage, the entry lobby is where you'll cross paths with your neighbours and their pets, where you would check your mail and the community notice board before heading up via the lift or open stair. This apartment is just over 50 square metres, with about 11 square metres for deck and garden. It faces west toward the station house platform and suburban roofscape beyond. The layout is simple, with a short corridor that forms an entry or threshold zone before branching into an open plan kitchen, dining and living area. The bedroom and external terraces unfold from there, with the bathroom tucked away behind the entry. There are built-in planters that edge the private balcony. We've used a linear joinery element to unify the living, dining and kitchen areas. And we've sort of modified how it presents to those spaces to give more flexibility of use, to provide more storage and adaptability depending on how you want to occupy. The imperfect palette sort of enables space for life. It enables space for dings and nicks. Intended to be robust and natural, non-toxic and low carbon. The structural concrete slab and columns are visible internally, which is a way to harness the integrity of that material without adding any applied finish. We've used recycled hardwood floorboards, class one timber decking, an Australian-made terrazzo for floor tiles and bench tops. We have E-Zero joinery with timber veneer and Australian-made brass fittings, fixtures and door hardware. The ability for this space to be easily maintained but also to mark with time and use in a positive way is part of creating what is a more livable architecture.
Nightingale ANSTE is carbon neutral in operation, meaning it's all electric and powered by 100% renewable certified green power. It also runs on an embedded energy network. It has an average 8.9 Nathos rating for energy performance with a 20 kilowatt photovoltaic array an energy efficient CO2 packaged heat pump for hot water and for hydronic heating and a host of other energy saving measures such as apartment kill switches, LED lighting and sweet fans to bed and living rooms. There's a 2000 litre rainwater storage tank for collected and reused for common areas and an e-water station for chemical free cleaning. Because of its infamously high embodied carbon generated in the manufacturing of cement, the use of concrete is often contentious. Our approach here has been to use it only when it has at least a dual purpose for structure and for fire, for both thermal mass and final finish. Or externally, we've used a ribbed concrete that's self-shading, structural, and along this rail corridor has a really immense acoustic benefit. The project also has 46% cement replacement, manufactured sand and recycled water, which substantially lowers its carbon footprint. We've tried to fill every crevice with planting to eventually populate, shade and cool the facade to provide outlook, habitat and delight for both residents and the public. When we're designing these spaces, we think about it from a fabric first philosophy, where we're trying to create a really comfortable internal environment to reduce the need to use extra energy to heat and to cool the space, to rely on passive design. From a building perspective, we're focused on making it as efficient and as low impact as possible, but ongoingly, it's up to the residents. These homes are designed to promote an effortlessly sustainable lifestyle. Slipping into the cycle path from the ground floor garage, multi-stream waste management integrated in joinery and sorted readily, not in the basement, but on the ground floor. And the ability to use external blinds, fans and cross ventilation to adapt for individual comfort. For some, they'd be reluctant to live in this way, but I suspect it's about circumstances and the sophistication or quality of the offering. Melbourne hasn't had that long history of living close together. It remains a cultural shift for some. Living here is particularly easy. There is a simple elegance of having the things you need close and for only paying for the space that you really need. Operational emissions associated with how you fuel a building are currently responsible for the largest portion of construction emissions and almost 40% of global greenhouse gas emissions. We can also make a dent on that upfront carbon by using robust materials that require less energy to produce, by applying a reductive, more with less approach and by substituting high emissions elements like Portland cement. The goal is that this approach might help to push both the market and the supply chain to decarbonise our industry.